Hey, Tony here from BikeBerry. It's good to see you. So today my man Elijah here is to help me install the Bullet Train electric start engine. This is an 80cc uh, electric start. You push a button, vroom, vroom, vroom. It's pretty awesome. A lot of people really love these. What we're going to do is we're going to install it in the frame behind me, which is currently on the site as a tank frame. It has that super cool frame on there, real old school look. And I do want you to keep in mind though, that I did modify this down tube to mount the engine more precisely. So pay attention to that as we do the install. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to share this engine with you. It's a favorite. Let's roll. Let's do a quick run through of all the parts that come in the kit. So, you know, you have your main body of your engine here. We have the head uh, with the piston in it all ready to be assembled on there. You've got your throttle. This is your old throttle assembly with your push button start and everything. Uh, and then you have actually this whole box of electronics with your CDI and, you know, your starter and everything in there. So that's good. Uh, this is the carburetor that come with it, your regular old NT. What I'm going to do is I've been using uh, the HP so much recently, I'm just going to go straight for the, for the HP on this one. Uh, we've already done videos on how to set it up, so we'll end up, uh, you know, guiding you to that if you need that help, okay? Uh, this is actually a tool that comes with it to pull, you know, the engine apart. So it's a puller. So don't worry about that right now. That's something that we'll focus on in another video down the road. Uh, here's your engine gasket. Uh, then you'll need to get a 12 volt battery. Uh, it comes with this case. And what you'll need to do is get this uh, type of battery to put in there. And then it's got all these hanging brackets. And if you notice the exhaust, uh, your muffler has a pretty unique... Uh, mounting end on it that's different than most two strokes okay this is your little your little gasket in there it's a crushable gasket uh, overall these work pretty good i've used this same kind of exhaust on the uh the 100 cc on the f0 but yeah that's pretty much all your parts as far as anything that's different of course you'll get you know your chain and all of that but yeah i'm excited to to put it on this bike it'll give a real cool old school look to it so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull the arm up here to the top like that. And then we're going to put the head on. So your bearing and everything come in there like that. So we're going to have to pull that out. Okay. Okay, this is the position that we want to go in. So this is the... The back of the engine, where the carburetor points to, this is the front of the engine, where the uh, exhaust points to, okay? You can see that there's a clip already in that side. We're gonna take our bearing, and we're gonna push it into here, okay, like that. We're gonna slide this together. It's kind of tight, because there's tight tolerances. Um, see how that went together? Our arm is connected to our piston here. What we'll do is push that all the way in so it slides over to the other clip, but we have our bearing. We're going to put our clip in there to hold all that together. All right, so before you bolt your head down, make sure you got your gasket on here. Everything's attached, it's all good. Then we'll go ahead and slide our gasket up so we don't catch it. And push down. Like that. So it has these four bolts. Since this is a one piece head, uh, you know, jug, it's all one piece. So it has these bolts in there and they just go in like this. And they're a 10 millimeter bolt. One washer, by the way. And I like to do a crisscross pattern this way and this way so that it seats down there tightly and evenly. All right, so we got everything snug. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna get things tight 
enough for now. We're not going to go and torque them down yet because I want to make sure everything is uh, good. Sometimes I have to backtrack and, you know, loosen things up and all that. So I learned to not go crazy and torque everything down right away. Just get it snug so that everything is where it should be. And then you can go and tighten it all down once you have it mounted on the bike. But you can see how there's a little give to each one as I keep going around to it. So that really helps. And that's good enough for now. So let's mount this onto the frame. There's more wires on this one than your typical 80cc engine. And if you remember what I said in the beginning of the video, I modified this frame to really seat this engine properly. So if you look under here, there's the right kind of spacings for your chain ring and everything. So it should sit properly on this bike. All right, so this one has four bolts. So two on each side that you can see. So I tend to use bolts like this in the beginning. That way without, and if you notice, without any washers or anything, because then I can reposition things and I can kind of play around with it while I'm building it. And I'm not committed with lock washers and lock nuts and all of that stuff yet, because there's no point in doing it too early. All right, same back here. We've got the same bolts where these are what I would call the temporary bolts, getting it mounted on here, kind of feeling it out where it's going to go. The goal is to drive these bolts all the way in. And then you could do this with studs also, but I use bolts because then I have a, something to wrench on, basically. Um, and then I use these nuts to go against it. And then we just start tightening them down. So that's seated against the frame properly. This is great for testing out uh, your engine mount situations. Yep, so same thing, I tighten these all the way down and then I'm just gonna snug it up against there on the plate so that I know everything is uh, nice and centered. That's the thing you wanna make sure is that everything is looks lined up and it's not leaning to one side or the other. Do is we're gonna put the carburetor on. This is the NT carb that came with it, but like I said, I'm using the HP carbs recently, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put an HP on there because I like the automatic choke. Uh, you can jet them more easily. Uh, I don't know. There's all kinds of cool stuff that I've been liking about them. So you can go check those videos out. So the cool thing about these is they had like, if you notice there was a plastic insert in there and that really uh, helps seal any from any air leaks. I don't know. I'm just digging them lately. They're cool. So it has this coppery looking uh, gasket. You can see that it's rounded on this side and flat on this side. So the cool part is, is this is flat from our, our muffler. It fits just like that. So we're gonna put that up in there, rounded part towards the engine. Like that. So I'm not gonna put all the washers on, lock washers and all that, because I'm just trying to figure out where things wanna go. So I like to keep it really simple and just put the nuts on for now. And then later on, I'll go back in and we'll put all of that stuff in there once it's all seated and where I feel like it needs to be. You really want this to be very even because you're crushing that gasket in there, okay? So again, I'm just snug. So I'm actually not crushing it yet. But when I go down to start testing it, that's where we'll do that. One thing you want to keep in mind is between the pedal cranks is to have your exhaust in the middle of the frame. So that way, that way your pedals don't hit it. So just pay attention to that when you get this mounted on there. So one very important thing to know is this engine is really wide, right? 
So they send you these pedal cranks that are bent to accommodate the engine's width. Uh, here's the full assembly of that. Let's go. This is a good time to put our spark plug in. Remember again, we're just getting things snug. I'm not gonna go in and tighten everything down like crazy. Just getting things set. So the most unique aspect of this engine installation versus all the other ones is it has this whole box of, <laughs> of electronics, right? This control box. And then your throttle has all the buttons for start, stop, uh, you know, everything, okay? And there's all these, all these plugs on it. Right, so that's the most unique thing. So let's focus on next on where to mount this box. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount the box right here because this is you know our CDI wire right right to our spark plug, uh, and then all of our other connections are in here. Plus, I kind of want this to be a kind of military-ish commuter kind of bike. Um, but anyway, there is bolts in here. I'm gonna use that one. I put a little bit longer one in there. These straps come with the kit to kind of figure out how you wanna use them and where you wanna mount. So I'm gonna utilize this one here, mount there. So I'm gonna drill it out, bolt it in, and then I think I can get another one here on the frame. So let's work on this one. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this guy up, slide it here. In. We're going to put a nut on there, that way we can kind of get things locked in. So we're going to do a second strap through here. Okay, we got a nut on here and a bolt all the way through. We've shaped the strap so that it would hold it on the bike and then against this, the plastic casing. I think that's good. So that's a good start. Now we'll Tighten this top one also. All right, pretty sturdy. All right, let's talk mounting the battery. I think the first place to start is kickstand mounting position. They give you all these other brackets and everything. And then once you've had some experience with it, then move it somewhere else. Cause that's what I plan on doing with this bike. So let's go ahead and do that. There's two brackets that are to hold the box. I'm gonna leave the lid off because I want access to the terminals, you know, uh, for connecting. So we'll end up adding, adding the lid in once we're all done. But for now, we're gonna leave it off. Um, but this bracket here, uh, it's got these kind of clips in, it's a two part one. The clips in each side, and then you put the bolt through the top. So you hang that one that way, okay? So we have that one in there ready to go. So that's hanging like that. All good. Then we're going to put this one in here like that. So we're gonna slide this battery box in here like that. Everything is not gonna be perfectly lined up when you first do this, trust me. All right, 
shove it in there like that. Everything's kind of loose. We're gonna shove this up through here like that. I'm just gonna do the nut because I'm gonna have to probably pull some of this apart just like you will as you're figuring this out. So just do the nut, that's pretty good. There's a lot of stuff in the way that you're gonna have to kind of figure out how to work around. For beginning, that's not too bad. No, it's not gonna look perfectly seated down unless you modify all these clips and everything. Um, but yeah, this is a good starting point. It's Once we tighten it down, it will be out of the way of your chain over here. Yeah, see your chain over there. It'll be out of the way of your exhaust over here. See that? Um, so it should be good. Good for testing purposes. All right, see so yeah, how that's pretty stable and it's got clearance on all sides of everything. So it's a good testing spot. I'm gonna connect our throttle and our wiring. Pull it apart, and your throttle, which is your, here, you pull this out. I'm actually going to spin this on, so that way your cable guide is in the housing, like that. So we're gonna slip this in here, Work it in and then you're gonna lay it right in that groove, okay? Which pushes it into the housing here. So that's what you want it to look like. So when you're pulling your throttle back, it returns like that. slide this on here like that so we get it in the right positioning because this is all of your start controls and everything what we're going to do next is attach the throttle cable to the carburetor and when you pull this apart everything wants to explode <laughs> see how all the parts are kind of misaligned so we got to keep them together so we can get it back together so what i do is i pull this to the side and i use a gel super glue put dots near the screw holes can you see that okay so near where the, the screws go through and then take and push this down in like that okay and then zip kicker which cures it and doesn't hurt plastic or anything. Okay, that'll hold that in there. So let's start with getting the rubber boot off. Put that over like that. This housing, this tube here, is actually a little long because I think they're made for uh, scooters or something like that. Uh, so you're gonna have to probably get a an aluminum throttle grip like I have so then you have more places to put this business end of things in okay okay so then on your slider going through like that Here's a picture of it. That. Um, okay. So now you have this whole assembly so there. Work this in here. The spring to stay on top of your slide. So what we'll do for that? Just want to make sure everything's positioned well. So I'm gonna use super glue. Remember a gel like super glue, like that. Put this like that. Okay. Now, 
of your assembly is going to stay together. Still have to hold it so that it <laughs> doesn't fly apart on you, but for the most part, it should stay together for you. All right, you can see the slider, watch, by pulling the cable. So, pulling the cable here, just like a throttle will. It works. And it was a lot easier to get together than <laughs> all those uh, individual parts flying apart on you. So yeah, so you can see them. See them in there? Good deal, huh? Now that you got your cable attached, Let's take apart So the jet that ships with these is a really large hole. What we're gonna do is we're gonna jet it down, okay? So you can order a pack of like, you know, in the 60s, like 65 through 70. Um, this is probably, I can't remember what it is, but it's mid upper oh. 70s, big. All right, so you can see on here it says 65. I like to do that. It tends to work really well uh, in the Midwest here. So all you do is take out this one, which is huge. Put in this one, which should get us in the ballpark of being just right now. You have the whole pack because you may need to go move up, you know, to a little bit bigger hole, but that's for you to test. But this is a good starting point, okay? So we did that, we're good. Make sure our seal is good on here. Put it back together. Okay, so for the adjustment screw, I'm gonna back it out all the way. Okay, till it comes out like that. I'm gonna screw it in just a little bit till it grabs. And then we're gonna screw it in. Again, these are half turns, I guess you could say. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, roundabout, okay? That's a good starting point to really see where your idle is going to be and again i in for higher idle out for lower idle okay but that's a good starting point for the whole mechanism all right that's good enough for right now we've got everything mounted on here solidly we've got you know our battery mounted here i feel good about it we've got our electrical box on here it's good and strong the engine everything's mounted and connected together what we'll focus on the next video coming up is getting all the electrical connected and all that so that we know we get it right and we get it clean and everything. Uh, then after that, we'll do test videos. So we'll see you on the next electrical video.